following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, Happy New Year. What's happening, man? Happy New Year too, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm doing well. Can I throw a quote out at you? Sure. In the market, somebody knows something. Someone always knows something. That statement was made by a great trader by the name of Tom O'Brien about six, seven years ago. Oh, yeah. And it kind of hit me like a brick. But you're right. Somebody always knows something. Hey, Carlos, what's going on, brother? I'm calling you back, Tom. This morning, I had the, a pleasure to talk to you and your son, and I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you again. Why? Well, I, I think you made some money on this bond. <laughs> oh, yes, Tom. Your newsletter helped me. That's a beautiful yeah. thing. We appreciate the growling problem with us out here. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever. You focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great 2018, folks. Here we go. Rocking and rolling. Cultivate wisdom. This is a great card to kick off the year, too. You don't need to create accumulate knowledge to become wise. Anyone can become wise. When you become wise, you respect your body, you respect your mind, and you respect your soul. When you become wise, your life's controlled by your heart, not your head. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 59, NASDAQ up 91, S&P's up 15, gold contract up $8.90, trading at $1,318 an ounce, silver, up nine cents, seventeen dollars twenty-three cents. Both gold and silver caught a bid once again. Light sweet crude flat, sixty dollars thirty-three cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year note down eleven ticks, one twenty-three twenty-two. Thirty-year bond off a full point plus five ticks, one fifty-one twenty-seven. King dollar. King dollar down 266 ticks, trading at 91.560. The euro is at 120 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is at 112 and a quarter to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? We got the cash S&P right now trading up 17 bucks. You're at 26.90. And bottom line, you're high is 2694.97. We've hit 2692.39. The way it's up here, I suspect, guess what? Wants to get tested. Dow Industrials. We take a look at the Dow Industrials. Dow Industrials having a hard time holding higher price, which is a little divergence out here. Uh, you're still at the highs, though. You're up 61 bucks. The high in the Dow is 24,876. We made 864 today. Right now, you're at 782. The composite. The composite also wants to reach for that high and tag that high. Uh, composite has wide price spread today. Uh, let's go take a look at the volume right here and see if we get the volume also behind the move. You're going to have volume. You'll, you'll have decent volume. We won't have extraordinary volume, but we'll probably come in with about uh, 1.8 billion. So what we have is this. Uh, your high is 7,003. You've reached 6998 today. I suspect that's also going to get tagged, too. Small caps. A little bit different than the small caps. We take a look at the Russell 2000. We deal with the Russell 2000. This has kind of been laying out here for uh, since the 30th of uh, November. Uh, small caps are having a hard time getting over, actually, their range from the last uh, two to three weeks. We hit uh, 50, 1549. Right now, you're at 1544. Uh, and we'll see if we take, let's go over to the IWM. We take a look at the IWM. What do you have with the IWM? That's kind of hanging tough. It's try to, try to take out uh, its high. Hasn't, hasn't been able to do it. We're up 91 cents right now. And uh, we'll see where this baby uh, brings it uh, into the close. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold contract caught a bid once again. Now, gold has been a straight line move off this bottom from December 12th. December 12th. You're 1238. We're at 1318. You have volume behind the move. Bottom line, you just took out the 
13.12 from the 16th. That sets up a run to the 13.65. Silva, same type of setup in Silva. Silva did need what it got out here today. We needed a little uh, more push inside the Silva market. Silva right now um, up nine cents. Still approaching. This, this is what the difference is in Silva. The gold market has already taken out its swing points from October and November. Uh, Silva's approaching them. I like how it's approaching them, though. You're, you're approaching them with volume behind the move. The swing points we're talking about. November 17th, that's laying out at 17.45. October 16th at 1759. The way silver is set up also, it looks like we're gonna go for the September 8th level of 18360. September 8th, if you happen to be uh, trading, whether it's the commodities, the bonds, or the dollar, that is your benchmark in all of them. Let's go and we take a look at the 10-year bond, 10-year bond right out here. Last week we go. We break down, we come back inside the range. Today you're testing that, we'll see whether it can hold the, uh, the range is 123.27. Right now you have four ticks underneath it. Uh, that being said, I like how this is pulling back. This is pulling back on light volume. If we go to the TLT and we take a look at the TLT, what you're gonna see is that the TLT, we got up to 127.12 last week. You're backing down now with nine million shares. You're going into 11 million. We'll see what this does at the close, but you're actually also back into 24 million. Um, that's setting up that that also wants higher price. And if that's what we're going to be talking about, higher price, a low yield once again, it's going to be pretty wild watching this whole thing shake out. When we take a look at the Federal Reserve, where they're meeting set up this year. Uh, first meeting is going to be uh, the, the 31st of January. Second is the 21st of March. Now, the 21st of March right now, we have a 75% probability that the Fed will go up uh, to 25 basis points. Next meeting after that is going to be on May 2nd. So it's kind of intriguing that we're only at January 1st, and you can see uh, that there's a, little, there's a little spread out between here and May 2nd. It's three meetings. Uh, then they start piling up a bit. Uh, we take a look at some of the higher volume stocks out here inside this marketplace today. Uh, GE's up 42 cents. That caught it first time it caught a bid in a long time. Bank of America is up 17. You got Micron Tech up two dollars and 20 cents. Apple's up 272. You have Facebook up 438. Let's go over and take a look at Facebook and see if that must be trying to get up into its highs. Yeah, it is. So Facebook is also trying to get up into its highs. That high there is 184.25. You're at 180. We go over to Apple. We take a look at Apple. What do you have with Apple? That's up 265. That's probably going to go test the uh, 174 to 177. Um, XBT, we go into Bitcoin. Bitcoin also caught a bid out here today. What do you have with Bitcoin? Bitcoin right now, is trading up $1,545. Uh, the low last night was $12,984. Right now, you're at $15,164. Uh, don't forget, folks, uh, you can come over to our website at TFNN, hit the Nadex banner, bring up that platform, and you can be uh, open a demonstration account. You can be uh, trading along. They have Bitcoin weekly spreads. So it's a great way to really understand how Bitcoin is trading, where it's trading without putting up your bread. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow's up 68, Nasdaq's up 91, S&P's are up 15 and a half. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now up 73. You get the NASDAQ up 92. Uh, S&Ps are up uh, 16. If we go over and take a look at the uh, NDX 100 with the Qs, what you're going to see uh, it's a one-way trade out here uh, all day long. They started out at 156. You're at 158.27. It's going after the high of 158.77. Inside the NDX 100, the three Qs, uh, strength out here is uh, INCY, uh, Insight uh, Corporation, that's up uh, almost 7%. You have Micron Tech up 5.4%. C-Trip is up 5.2%. And you got Biogen up uh, 4.9%. So let's stay with Biogen for a second, see what the... Uh, okay, so Biogen's trading 334. You got Monster price spread on it. Volume is also good. Um, let's just, they're buying it. That's the bottom line. As we go into the IBB, IBB has also got juice behind the move. So the IBB, this is a huge consolidation. The top is 114, the bottom is 100. You're at 109. This has juice going back top side though. So this baby uh, wants to go back, get back up to its highs, go test out 112. Uh, to the 114 area. If we go back to uh, Bitcoin for a second, this is kind of intriguing, really intriguing actually. So if you take a look at the, the aspect of uh, how we went up today, uh, what this, uh, what part of this, well, what this is about probably, is the Wall Street Journal came out uh, reporting uh, approximately uh, at about 12 o'clock, and that's when Bitcoin took off, that uh, Peter Thiel uh, was making a huge bet on uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, he has a founders fund, the venture capital fund uh, co-founded by Thiel has amassed hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin. The Wall Street Journal reported uh, Tuesday citing unknown people familiar with the matter. Well, bottom line, we'll see whether that's a fact or not, but bottom line, that's what uh, gave it some juice. Now, it's going to be cool as watching this shake out because it looks that we have a consolidation, you know, and the top's going to be the, the highs, of course. The lows are going to be um, that downdraft on the 22nd. So you had 10,770 in the low. You got 90, 19,500 on the high. 
And the real kick is going to be, I suspect this one, we're going to run to the 16499 somewhere in there, and we'll see how it handles it. But now you absolutely have a tradable vehicle out here because uh, volatility, yeah, you have the volatility in spades, but you do have a tradable vehicle. Let's go over and take a look at the uh, XLF inside the financial sector. Uh, financial sector right now, flat, down seven cents, but it's actually flat. Now, what's intriguing about this is that we've been up here now since December 4th. What you have and you had on Friday was that you, you had a test of the highs going all the way back to the 12th. It gave it up and it came down on volume. What we've had out here today is that you have a sideways to lower move with an expansion of volume. So it looks like the low that was established on the 15th of December wants to get tested, which is the 27.63. And that's going to be really, uh, that's something we're going to watch like a hawk. Uh, the reason being is that because when this broke topside, it had the volume behind the move. The price spread had the volume, hasn't been able to move since then. So we'll see whether this is going to end up being a failure. See, when you take this back further, what you have is that you are right into uh, a, a very large part of how this made its highs, you know, in 2007. You know, so realistically, when you look at this, it's like there's no reason that it should not be able to hit the 30.9598. But the way this is trading, it doesn't look like uh, it is actually going to. Uh, we we'll go take a look at J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, J.P. Morgan, that's sideways move. That's not telling us much. Berkshire Hathaway which is the largest weighting structure. Okay, so Berkshire's the culprit. This is pretty cool. Okay, so Berkshire's down on some volume. Berkshire's down a buck 33, three million shares traded. You're going into 3.5 million. Yeah, this is coming down on volume. So the Berkshire just might give uh, the XLF some problems. Uh, let's go to a Bank of America and see what Bank of America looks like. That's not bad. Let's go back to the XLF. I'm curious as to what the weighting structure is right now. It's changes somewhat. Okay, so Berkshire is 11.2%. Not a huge amount, but a good amount. Uh, Wells Fargo, that's a sideways move. Let's go to the energy markets. XLE out here, that's breaking top side. It's up $1.42. You're taking a swing point out. You got another ABC up. This is, uh, this, is, this is going topside. Let's see where we're going. I see. Okay, so we're going after the highs uh, from December of 2016. The low of the high is 74 bucks, 74.36. The high is 78. That baby wants to go after it. Now, that's, you know, that's a consolidation that we've actually been in since uh, July of 2015. ExxonMobil, XOM. That's a nice move. Exxon finally got a move. Okay, so she's, she's, she's taking off. She's got a move. That's saying that wants to go test 89. You're at 84. Chevron. Chevron is stronger. That's up 231. Yeah, this wants to go test. Uh, that's the high of 2014, too. You got 129, 129 is game. So there's, there's, some, there's some action uh, in that uh, commodity market, no doubt about it. The, the kicker here, I think going into 2018, is that is this gonna be a real commodity bull that we're coming out of, that we're coming into? The reason is that that dollar, folks, uh, we'll see where that's gonna shake out when it's uh, coming down to those lows and testing those lows. But that, that dollar, that is one big number. Uh, and if we take a look at this dollar on a, continue, on a continuous contract, what you're going to see is that it couldn't, it didn't have any type of retracement, meaning anemic retracement the whole year. The high of last year was 103, the low was 90.900, and we're laying right at it. And if you, I put this back a little bit further so you can see there's some pretty good clarity, uh, and I can only make the case that we're already in the lower range. You know, once you got under 93,115, you're in the lower range, and there's really nothing stopping this, like to 82. Eight, eight, there's the highs of 2008 and 2010 
does have some support. That's 88. But you can see, if you happen to be looking at this, I have this on a five-year chart right now. You can see there's nothing in between stopping it from 88. You do, you put that back, um, and then you do have some good support. Well, we'll, we'll find out whether it's good support. It traded at the 88 mark for approximately six to seven months. It traded there in uh, 2008 for six or seven months. It traded in 2010 for only two months and then gave it up again. So that's going to be a big number. And if that's where the dollar is going, we're going to have commodities going uh, topside. And if we take a look at what hasn't, you know, the copper market took off, oil took off, natural gas is down. You know, uh, the ones that to really keep your eye on are going to be wheat, corn, beans. If we go take a look at wheat today, wheat's at 433 a bushel. And it's coming off the lows, but it, that's... I wouldn't consider that a real sign of strength yet. I want to see some wide price spread, accelerated volume. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials up 76. NASDAQ up 91. S&Ps are up 36. We'll come right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you you want to know how everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want is growing your money a priority everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking money market and cd balances looking to diversify everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non fdic insured metals and when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is up 80. Nasdaq's up 94. S&Ps are up by 16. Let's go over to the XAU and the HUI. So XAU, HUI, this is what we have out here. You got the XAU up $2.55. We're at 87.82. Your swing point you're going after is 88.19. Bottom line, let's go take a look at a few of the equities so we can see what kind of volumes we got out here. So if we go to 
Uh, Barrick Gold first, which has been a dog, but bottom line, that's the largest waiting inside the uh, XAU and the HUI. Guess what? You got it going. Barrick uh, up uh, 67 cents. You have the volume behind the move. We've done 10 million shares. Uh, that's taking swing points out with 4 million. You're going into the downdraft from the 26th, which is going to take a lot of juice to get through. Uh, the low was 14.45. The high is 15.59. The way it's trading, it wants to go. Uh, so I expect you're going to get in there and get up and over that. Newmont, Newmont Mining is uh, up 53 cents right now. That took its swing point out. Now, Newmont's really strong, man. Newmont's going after this 39.55, which is your September 8th benchmark. The September 8th benchmark is a big number, folks. The reason being is that if we go to the GDX and take a look at it, what you're going to see is this. The GDX right now is at 23.74. Uh, you've taken out the highs, uh, the swing points from the, the 28th, uh, and we're going to have the volume. We already got more volume than we had in the 28th. So now you're going after October swing of uh, 23.99, and we're going to have volume on that too. So this wants to run to 25.58. That's the high. The Gold Bugs Index is the strongest, uh, and this is a, basically a pretty good indication that the actual metals market is going to keep running. Um, the equities inside the metals market because the HUI first off would say that the gold contract itself would run because there's the, this hedging but very oh sorry folks excuse me there's very small amounts of hedging uh, if you're in the in the HUI so we're up 530 we're going after the swing points from October that's going to be 201 is the low 205 is the high this baby's got juice underneath it. Uh, one of the Tigers want to take a look at Nugget. Nugget is the triple daily uh, direction gold miners of the HUI. Uh, the low out here for the year is 23. The high is 54. And this baby right now is up 211, trading 33 bucks. This is on its way up to the 35.95 number, and it has volume behind the move. You know, so I suspect what we're going to see here. This is uh, very well could be a very fast and furious move. When you do look at the aspect of how we come off lows in December, the last year, two years in, in general, January is a good month inside the gold market. You have a couple of different things happening. You've got off lows. You get the weak hands out. The strong hands are in. Start moving higher. Once it gets its acceleration going, which it has the momentum behind the move now, you get some action. When we put that together with the dollar index, which, you know, is in trouble, that adds some fire to the fuel. If we go over to the euro, if you want to see something, if, you got, if you're going to Europe, folks, get over to our website at TFN and open up one of those Everbank accounts and put your dollars in there for euros uh, because this euro right now, so check this out. You know, we take this back. I'm going to take this back 20 years. So when you take it back 20 years, I'll take it back 30. So you can really see kind of where we're at here. You take it back 30 years. 30 years ago, what's that? 88, 88, we're at 124. We're at 120 right now. Reached a high in 2008 of 158. We had low, the low out here was uh, 104 to 102. Now, we've come off those lows, and you've come off those lows with strength. The way this is set up right now, it's saying two different things. It's saying, number one, that the dollar is going to go down into this 82 area. It's saying the euro, bottom line, wants to get up into the 139, 140 area. And it's going to be pretty easy to do, you know, once it gets its head inside the 123. 123 for the euro is going to be like the 90 for the U.S. dollar. That's kind of how that's set up. Once you get back inside it, guess what? This thing's going to be here fast and furious. So great way to basically, if you're going to take a vacation in Europe, go open one of those accounts, put the bread in it right now. Bottom line, whatever way the currency goes, you know that your trip is paid for. That's my point more than anything. You know, because it's, it's really cool when you're doing it. You can do it as a trade too, but when you're doing this aspect, you're actually going to spend it. The huge, there's a huge difference between, you know, getting 100 and, uh, what, 120 to 1 U.S. dollar 
versus 140 to one U.S. dollar. We go to, and that being said, let's go over to the, the uh, Canadian currency. Canadian currency right now is at 125, and uh, what's intriguing here is that on this 125, it's like, okay, I, I, are we going to hold here? Um, 124.77 is a big number. If we get under that uh, 124.77, then you get game down again to 120. Uh, and that's saying that, you know, uh, another currency uh, versus the dollar is, is getting stronger. And the big number out here, folks, uh, is going to be the yen. Uh, the yen looks to me, we're at 112. The yen looks to, like it wants to run to 110. And, of course, that's much stronger. And... If that volume's correct at 110, guess what? Game is on again at 107. If that's what you got, then you're going to see a couple different things happen, you know, because you have the correlation inside the, the dollar index. The euro is 60% of the dollar index. So you can see the difference in the correlation, how the euro is actually much stronger um, than the dollar index being weaker. And that's because the yen really hasn't moved. Uh, and we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, coming into uh, the next few weeks. If we go over to look at Rango Resources, G-O-L-D, uh, Rango's out here today, up a buck 67. You're also moving with volume. You're moving into these swing points, and you have your volume moving into them. Right now, we're already on 441,000 versus 311, so you got action there. Um, Franco Nevada has something wrong with it. This is going to be intriguing because I love the stock, uh, and this is a problem... You know, and so isn't Royal Gold. I was going to go to Royal. So Franco Nevada is down 76 cents, 410,000. RGLD. Royal Gold got hit last week. One of its mines that shut down because not enough in water. Yeah, this is not. This is probably going to test that 84.81. But I suspect before we're done, that low out here, 78, is going to get hit once again. Uh, we go take a look at Aniko Eagle, AEM. It's not bad. I'd like to see more volume. You did, you're at 46.72. Yeah, this is not enough volume. You get 700,000. We need about 1.6 million here. That's, that's, not a, that's not a good setup. Let me see this. Gold Corp, Franco Nevada. Okay, let's look at Gold Corp. Okay, Gold Corp got juice underneath it. Okay, we needed that. Because that AEM should have more juice underneath it. I like how Gold Corp's trading. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's up 71. Nasdaq's up 93. S&P's up 16. We'll come right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is up 77. You get the Nasdaq up 96. S&Ps are up 16 and a half. If we do go inside the Dow Industrials, take a look at uh, what's moving it around out here. Uh, the mover out here, Disney's putting uh, 27 positive points. Apple's putting 18. Chevron's putting 16. Exxon's putting 9. Uh, taking away from it, uh, Travelers. Travelers Insurance is putting 26 negative points. Home Depot, 9. Caterpillar, 7. If we go over to Travelers and just take a look at Travelers and see what's happening with Travelers. So Travelers is down 379. You got some volume on the move, that's for sure. Let's see. Um, hmm. It's not like there's a lot of news out here, man, but they're selling, the, they're selling Travelers away, that's for sure. I wonder if this uh, cold streak is going to do anything for them. Uh, bottom line is that Travelers uh, is trading back to October 19th pretty quick. It's been consolidating up there. Uh, you did have some uh, volume uh, in this equity on the 15th, but it couldn't take out its highs. Uh, inside the uh, NDX 100, um, inside, uh, inside the corporations, uh, uh, the mover, then we get Micron. So let's go over to Micron. Micron and these chip stocks, they uh, no doubt took the NASDAQ uh, up big time in 2017. And, uh, you know, they came down hard. They came down hard. The highs were generated November 24th, 49 bucks and 88 cents in Micron's case, comes down hard to 39. And this, to me, would just be a counter trend move. You, you have, it has some movement behind it, but it doesn't have the juice behind it. Let me go take a look at NVIDIA, NVDA. So NVIDIA, uh, it's not moving, interesting. Okay, so that's up $5, but realistically, it's not moving. Um, the, the, the span, um, the highs of 199, the lows are like 191. That's the, that's the little consolidation it's been in. NVIDIA's high is uh, 218. When that came down, that came down hard to 180. Uh, let's go take a look at Intel, see what we got with Intel. Intel's better looking, that's for sure, than the, both of those. Intel does have a high volume high at 47.64, which I suspect... Uh, will get tested out there. We go take a look at, uh, go back to the gold for a second. We'll go look at the GLD and the SLV. Uh, GLD today, this has juice behind it. Uh, 6.9 million shares. Uh, 125 you're at. You've taken out the October swing high. Yeah, this is, this is cool. We're going right after the uh, swing highs from September 8th. And what will end up happening with the GLD tonight, too, you'll see huge amount of volume come in at the close. So, you know, Friday... Even on a holiday week, we did 7.8 million, which is a big number. Um, today, we're at 6.9 already. You'll probably do about 8 million. You, the swing high up there has 9. Is it 9? Yeah, it's 9 million flat out. Uh, the SLV, we have with the SLV, 
Uh, that's going to need more juice. Okay, so we, we get a little divergence. The SLV is up 23 cents. It's 7.8 million. We'll probably get the 9 million, which is okay. It's not. It's not fabulous. Uh, you want to? I want to see this thing get like 12, 13 million as it's coming into these swing points. The difference would be then you're going into those swings with conviction. Let's go take a look at a few of those silvers. If we take a look at Pan American silver. It's not bad. This thing's pushing with volume. It's subtle, but pushing with volume. Uh, Great Panther, GPL. That's pushing with volume. That's good. AG, First Majestic. That's good. That's up uh, 45 cents, 3.8 million. That's, that's repairing that damage that got done on the 27th. 27th, that came down hard. Last Friday, we were tested, rejected lower price. It never took out a swing point, so that's not a bad setup. Um, let's go take a look at a few of the copper stocks. So, oh, Taseco, what happened here? This is interesting. Okay, so Taseco's down 27 cents. That is going south with volume. Okay, so Taseco, no, I'm not sure what, this this selling it. Let's go to another copper stock, uh, Southern Copper. No, Southern Copper is up. There's something else inside Taseco. Southern Copper is up a buck thirty-two, $48.77. Freeport Mac Moran, that's up 78 cents, 1974. Yeah, this, this copper run is pretty cool, man. It looks like, let me put this copper up for a second. So copper today is down five-tenths of one percent. That being said, guess what? It's already over HG1. It's already over the big consolidation that it's been in for a while. Let's see, 340, uh, 344 is the next number, man. 344, we hit uh, 332 last month. 344 looks like, well, three, the thing that's intriguing here is actually 379. 344 is the bottom, and 379 is the first small, smallest swing point up there. So that's game. That's a game, especially with this dollar uh, in trouble here. So the, uh, we'll take a look at some of the Dow stocks. Let's go over to Boeing, actually. So Boeing had a monster run last year. Is it still up at those highs? 296. It's about, it's, it's one rocket ship, man. It started off uh, January of last year. The stock is at 118, and you're at almost at 300. The high of last the month, actually, was 299.33. So there's no doubt that uh, that has some real juice underneath it. Volume-wise out here, what we're going to do inside the NYSE, we're at the 497 million, so that's going to come in about uh, 800 million. Uh, nothing heavy. NASDAQ composite, that should, that should do 1.8. 1.8's not bad. If it pulls, it pulls in with two, that's going, to be, that's going to be a good day for the NASDAQ. Price-wise, it already is a good day. And price-wise, it will not give it up. It looks to me like... Uh, so 7,003. Oh, this is interesting. We, you know, we just hit, hit 7,002.17. So bottom line, whether you're a bull or a bear, maybe we just uh, get that number hit today. We'll find out. And that's on the 18th. So watch. Now, if, if that's going to be the test today, if we go back, let's go take, take a look and see what we did on the 18th. So the 18th, we did 2.1 billion. Now, that's going to be hard to get. So 2.1 billion is the high, December 18th. Right now we're 1.5. They can get 400 million at the close. So the real question is going to be number one: Do you get to the highs in the next 10 minutes? Which there's no reason you can't. Uh, and then number two: uh, We'll have the test. Will the test be successful or not? We're going to find out. We're going to find out pretty quickly. Um, if we go and take a look at the uh, the cues and see just how close they are right now to the high. Uh, the Q's, 158.77. We hit 158.51 thus far. You know, so that's 
online also. And if that goes, this is actually getting up, uh, and it does have the, the juice behind it. 26 million shares already. You stay right there, folks. Coming back with the last uh, 10 minutes of trading. Dow Industrials up 93. NASDAQ up 101. S&P's up 18 and a half. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com. Dot com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now up uh, 93. You get the NASDAQ up uh, where are you? 102. Uh, S&Ps are up uh, 18. And uh, all of these look like they want to uh, get a fish at uh, the highs of the day. You had the NASDAQ. Uh, Nasdaq's up 1.5%, uh, big numbers. Uh, S&P up six ten seven tenths of 1%. Dow is up uh, just about three tenths, four tenths of 1%. Pro should four tenths. Uh, the, what the Dow managed to do is uh, at least get back some of its losses uh, uh, because the Dow point-wise had, had quite a little run out here today. Uh, we had a high that was uh, out there. Uh, this morning of 24,864, you had a low of uh, 24,741. So when you look at it, uh, that aspect, uh, guess what? It, it took back, uh, it got back uh, most of its gains, which, um, you know, as you're coming into the close out here, uh, that's, that's important for the bulls. There's no two ways about that. We take a look at the uh, trend out here. Uh, trend, bottom line, no one's scared of this market, folks. You're at 0.52. 
and uh, 0.52 there out there, and they are buying it. If we go to the VIX, we take a look at the VIX coming into the first day of trading of 2018. Uh, the VIX is laying out here at 9.6. Uh, that's down $1.44. And uh, that's, you know, what wants to go to the, the bottom of this range. The bottom of the range out here is laying out at 9.18. Yeah, we've been at 9.18 uh, a few times uh, in December. So, uh, the, vol the volume inside the NASDAQ composite, the composite is the one that's going to be the number to keep your eye on out here today. Uh, what you have is that we are going to be at highs in the composite, or right next to them, and 2.1 billion is the number. The reason being is that we're going after the highs of December 18th. We did 2.1 billion on December 18th. So I suspect it looks to me like we're going to do probably about 2 billion. Uh, so you're actually coming into that area, you're coming in with volume. Now what that's saying, if you come in there with volume, that's saying that, guess what? That uh, NDX 100 and the NASDAQ composite wants to break topside again. You stay right there, folks. We're coming back with some numbers after the close. Dow Industrials up 96, NASDAQ up 101, S&P's up 18 and a half. Come right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Oh, look who oh we have. it's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taking it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. Yeah. But holy commo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We're here five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great year, folks. Create new agreements based on respect and love. Take the responsibility to make new agreements with those you love. If an agreement doesn't work, Change the agreement, create a new one, use your imagination to explore all the possibilities. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials finish up 104, NASDAQ up 103, S&P's up 17. Percentage wise, what you had out here, folks, you had the Dow up four tenths of one percent, the S&P up eight tenths of one percent, and the NASDAQ up 1.5 percent. Pretty amazing, actually, when you think of it. You get four tenths. You get eight tenths, and then you double it up again. So each one of them is a double. Pretty, pretty wild. Gold contract. Gold contract taking up $10.60 at $13.19.90 an ounce. That took out its swing. Has the volume behind the move. Silver. Up eight cents. $17.23 an ounce. We, let's go right over first. We'll go, uh, well, actually, first we're going to go right into the NASDAQ composite. Why the composite? Composite, folks, is at all-time highs. You had wide price spread up here. 
Uh, bottom line, volume's not bad. It wasn't bigger than the high it's taken out. What's unusual about that? Nothing. <laughs> Same as 2017. Um, we are at 7,006. That's an all-time closing high. Our last high was generated on the 18th, uh, which was 7,003. We end up closing at 6,994. Bottom line, you're at the 7,000 level, and we'll see uh, what it can do. We take a look at the NDX 100. What do you have with the NDX 100? The three Qs. You're at 158.49, 158.77 is the number. Uh, you've done 30 million shares, so that's pushing into that swing point. It does have the volume as you're pushing in. Dow Industrials, we take a look at the Dow. Dow uh, almost looked like I wanted to give it up uh, earlier in the day. Uh, you were up uh, 140 bucks. You end up being down up uh, 40. Uh, came right back. 24,824. You're going right into this 24,876 number. Russell 2000, we take a look at the Russell. Russell 2000 right now, uh, that's up 13 bucks. Uh, staying at the top of its range, uh, Russell's a little weak compared to the other indices right now. Uh, the, the high in the Russell is uh, 1559. Right now, you're at 1548. Gold contract, what do we have with gold? Gold contract. Kicked off the new year, as the market did, uh, 268,000 contracts, up $10.70. You took out the swing points from the 16th of October, which is 1312. You're at 1320. Game is on now to 1365.80, which is the September 8th high. If we go to the actual equities inside the GDX, you'll see you had the price spread. You had the volume come in. Uh, the GDX took out its swing point. Uh, and it was going into my swing point, actually, from October 13th, which is the 23.99. Uh, we needed 23 million shares. You're going into that with 42 million, folks. So it looks to me that GDX is going to be up into the September 8th level pretty quickly. That would be 25.58. XAU, the Philadelphia Gold and Silver um, uh, Index, up $2.86. You're trading 88.14. That is right into its October 10th swing area. That wants to blow that away, get up to the 93 area. We go look at the Gold Bugs Index, the HUI. That was up $6.198. That's going af also after the October 10th area of 205.35. Uh, and they both did have volume. I actually get those volumes 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, but you, what you can do is that you can take a look at some of the high weighting structures and you'll see the volume that came in. Uh, Barrick Gold, we came in with 14.7 million, big number. That was taking out swings at 4 million. Newmont Mining, NWNEW, uh, that came in with volume of uh, 4.9 million. Uh, that, Newmont's really strong. Newmont's sitting actually right next to a September 8th um, highs. So it's going to be pretty cool there. That September 8th is a monster benchmark inside the commodity business, inside the metals business as well as the bond and the dollar, okay? Uh, let's go right to the dollar first. We, we'll stay with commodities for a second, meaning uh, commodities are getting stronger, dollar is getting weaker. The dollar is down 301 ticks, 91.525, and what we're going after is 90.680. So you're down about another 900 ticks. It's going to go after that September 8th level, uh, if we break that with volume, you get a monster ABC structure on the way down. And it's a monster, too, by the way, folks. Um, let's go into the bonds. Okay, so the 10-year first. 10-year, we came down with 1 million contracts. You are inside the lower range again, the lower range being 123.27. You're at 123.23. Uh, we came into 1.2 million we did 1 million. So that's not bad. And we didn't get to the lowest swing point. Tomorrow is going to be a big day in the bonds. That's the bottom line. Uh, in the 10 year in particular. Let's go to the 30 year. We take a look at the 30 year. The 30 year has been much stronger than the 10. There's no two ways about that. The 30 year came down, hit a low today of 151.12. You've done. 236,000, but yet you're going into 300,000 and 327. So that also came down with light volume. Uh, you can make the case inside the 30 year that it actually did reject the 15112. So the 30 year still is much stronger. If we take a look at the yield, the yield is at 2.45. And uh, the lows 
uh, for the last year. I believe we're still hanging at the, the two, yeah, the two mark. 2.03 is the low. Last 12 months, highs 2.62. So, bottom line, you're talking about um, some yields that are still very inexpensive. Uh, if we go over and we take a look at the uh, the Fed Fund future, uh, the next time that the Fed is expected to raise rates is the March 21st meeting. There's a 72 percent probability that we'll go up 25 basis points. The next meeting, folks, is January 31st. Right now. Uh, it's not even at 1% that um, the short-term rates would go up. So that's quite a while. I mean, it's going to be interesting. And then not only that, that's quite a while uh, that the commodities can run with this dollar going lower, um, you know, because uh, March 21st uh, is quite a way away. What do you got, 30, 60, you got 80 days away. That's a big number. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials finished up 104, NASDAQ up 103, S&P's up 17. We'll come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials have finished up 104. You had the Nasdaq up 103. S&P's up by 16 and a half. Uh, we go over and we take a look at uh, XBT. Let's go take a look at Bitcoin kicking into 2018. Uh, Bitcoin caught a bit out here today. Uh, bottom line is that you had a low out here uh, at uh, 12,984. Right now you're at 14,910. Uh, and inside, which, which caught that bid, too, by the way, folks, is that you had a report uh, around noontime from the Wall Street Journal that uh, Peter Thiel, who was uh, the founder, one of the founders of uh, PayPal, uh, his founder's fund, which is a venture capital firm uh, founded by him, had amassed hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin. Uh, so everyone piled in after him. Uh, bottom line, uh, we'll see uh, how that how that works out. Uh, Bitcoin had been trading at a price point of uh, thirteen thousand eight fourteen, and boom, within an hour, actually not even an hour, yeah, within an hour, it hit uh, fourteen. Uh, actually, hit fifteen thousand two eighty eight. So big numbers. Uh, Bitcoin is in a consolidation, so I expect that to the top. There's, there's two two separate ones. You know, when we came down hard on the 22nd of December, you had the, the counter trend bounce get up to 16,499. That was just over a 0.618 retracement of the move down. So I suspect, number one, you're going to go after that tomorrow, and we'll see whether uh, it can take that out. And if we take a look at, yeah, that's, that's the way to look at this right now. Um, and don't forget, uh, if you haven't test drove the Nadex platform, a uh, great time to come over to our website, hit the banner. Bring up the platform. Why? Because with a couple of different things happening, folks. Uh, that's defined options. That's what they are. So you have limited amount of risk. You know what the, you are risking. You can open a demonstration account. Uh, they have weekly spreads inside the Bitcoin market. So if you want to see how Bitcoin trades and look at, looking at a defined risk, great way to do it. Now, what also happens, of course, is that they have uh, commodities, currencies, and indices. But great way to go over it. Um, zero cost involved. Bottom line, just the quotes alone uh, are worth a lot more uh, because uh, guess what? Uh, quotes cost. And uh, you're talking about futures quotes, you're talking about commodity quotes, they're all inside uh, that index. And needless to say, and then uh, you can actually trade those weekly binaries inside that Nadex platform and you can see how they uh, work out. They open uh, every Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they close on Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, this week, they opened it Tuesday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they will close at 3 o'clock Friday, uh, and you can buy and or sell them anytime during that whole time frame. Some of the higher volume stocks that we had out here today, uh, we had uh, GE was up 53 cents. Uh, you had um, Micron Technologies up $2.55. Apple was up $3. AK Steel was up uh, $0.58. Cents. Uh, the steel, let's go look, look at the steel companies, AKS. So steel caught a bid. That's going to be all about the infrastructure bill. See where that's going to go. That's up $0.58. Cents. You're going into uh, the swing point there. It's $6.88 is the next number. We go into... Excuse me, folks. We look at the U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel was up $2.23. And that also caught a good bid. We take a look at this on a monthly basis. That's going for the top of its range. The top of the range is $41.83. We are at $37.42 right now. Um, Norfolk. Let me see. Norfolk Southern. Let's look at a couple of these rail companies. So the rails are up, too. So check this out. Norfolk Southern's up $2, $146. Uh, this is breaking out to new highs also. So what you have is this. So it's going to get intriguing watching this whole thing shake out. Specifically, what I mean is this. When you take a look at the dollar, the dollar is breaking lows and looks like, bottom line, it wants to get down to this 82, 83 area. If that's what we get, what you're going to see, which we haven't had in a few years, uh, is that you're going to see most of these commodities go topside. And the ones I'm talking about that haven't moved at all yet would be soybeans, wheat, corn. Uh, you know, what took off last year in a big way is that we had copper take off, we had oil take off, gold starting to take off. And if that's what we get, meaning the dollar continues going south, 
uh, you get the softs starting to go move higher. And in between that, then you have the steel stocks starting to move. What you're going to see is those rails are going to continue higher because the, the rails uh, bottom line are going to NFC, NF, no, oh, fuck. What you'll see is that, I don't know, because someone has got to carry all those commodities, and what ends up happening is the prices of the commodities get higher. Well, guess what? Those rails have no mercy, folks. Uh, taking them out of the uh, Midwest, pushing them to both coasts, guess what? All of a sudden, the freight goes up dramatically. Uh, you know, they just get it nailed down. And, you know, it looks to me like uh, these things are going to basically uh, keep going forward. And that just brings you back to the aspect that more than likely we're at the beginning of a um, commodity bull. You know, so we'll see where that shakes out. Uh, we certainly got uh, a bid inside the metals out here today in a big way. If you look at the GLD, um, the GLD came in with uh, 11.6 million shares, took out the swing point, which was 8.2 million, uh, 125, blew away that uh, October 16th area. So you have buyers. So what's game here is 128.30. And that September uh, 8th number is a big number. The reason the September 8th number is a big number is this. Watch this. If I pull this back a bit, what you're going to see is that last year when we made the run, up to uh, September 8th. That run, folks, started in July. Okay? We went from July, let's see, the first, the second week of July, ran up to uh, September. Starting where we're starting this year, there's no reason that it can only get there, but that it can also take out the highs from July of 2016. If that's what we have, that is one monster move. And the reason by it being that it would be a monster move is that when you pull this back, uh, if we got over the, the aspect of uh, this 131, well, then you are talking all-time highs. And it's a, it's a big number, you know, because the, we've been in a consolidation since June of 2013. You know, when we came down in April of 2013, the GLD went from 154 to 130 in a heartbeat. And what that was all about, that was a monster expansion. It went more than, prior to that, it went more than a 1 to 1.618 on the way up. You know, we went straight up from $66 in 2008 up to 185 without breathing. You know, so that was too much of an expansion. You did a huge retracement off of that. And as time heals, it's pretty amazing actually watching this. So... You know, we did almost a 0.786 retracement. So what that would say is this. It says, number one, you don't take out the highs. Doesn't mean you can't test them, though, no. and that would be quite a move. Um, it looks to me like we're, we're going to go for it. The real question is going to be uh, once we get up into this 130 area, do we have the juice? And if we have the juice at 130, then you're talking big action. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. We had the Dow Industrials finish up 104, NASDAQ up 103, S&P's up 16 and a half. We'll come right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. 
Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over and take a look at this. So uh, Airbnb, I'm sure most of us are familiar with Airbnb right now. They're changing the landscape of uh, real estate in a huge way uh, as to uh, exactly what Everything is worth per square foot, folks. That's what it comes down to in the business. So uh, Airbnb defeated a lawsuit. Now, this is a big lawsuit by an apartment investment management company, one of the largest residential landlords in the U.S., alleging that the online home-sharing marketplace enables tenants to break their lease agreements through unauthorized sublets. So what ends up happening is that as a landlord, you have a, a tenant signing a lease, most of these leases say inside it, listen, you, you know, if you're going to sublet it, you have to go back to the landlord, find out what the person is. Some of them don't let you sublet it at all. I believe in this case that's what that lease is about. So let's see what the judge had to say. A federal judge in Los Angeles agreed with Airbnb that it's insulated from the claims by the Communication Decency Act, a 1996 law that shields online service providers from liability for the content users post. Interesting. Here, what allegedly makes the listings unlawful, illegal, or offending is that they advertise rentals that violate um, uh, AMICOs, that's the uh, acronym for it, lease agreements. The U.S. District Judge uh, Dolly Grease, Glee said in a December 29th ruling, Airbnb host, not Airbnb, are responsible for providing actual listing information. Uh, Denver-based uh, Amico sued Airbnb last year, claiming that tenants at its high-end apartment complex in Los Angeles, where a unit can rent for as much as $17,000 a month, check this out, man, have been complaining about noisy Airbnb tourists taking over the common areas. Amico said that it had to hire more security staff to monitor its properties and to track down and evict illegal Airbnb guests. Airbnb, which has about 4 million listings worldwide, has said it doesn't specifically track the number of sublets advertised on its site. Its terms of service require hosts to follow local laws and regulations and to pledge that their bookings will not breach any agreements with third parties. The San Francisco-based company has argued that most short-term rental activity is innocent with people renting their primary homes to make ends meet. Since the startup was founded in 2018, landlords have argued it violates zoning laws and operates as an illegal hotel. Critics have also said abundant short-term rentals drive up housing costs and disrupt neighborhoods. We are pleased with the court's decision that enables Airbnb to continue to support 
Tenant host who used this platform to help pay the bills, Airbnb spokesman Nick Pappas, said in an email touting the company's friendly building program. The partnerships we have established with landlords have, have made it clear that home sharing can be a win-win situation for everyone. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Can you imagine? I'd like to know. I remember reading this article before. I just forget what the rents were. But so picture this. You have the this unit in Los Angeles, folks. Uh, the units rent as much as 17000 a month. So you can imagine um, what an Airbnb uh, per day would be there. And, you know, the way that, uh, the way that larger Airbnb entrepreneurs do this, and they're very successful at it, and I, I've seen it in Florida how they, how they do it, is this. Is it you actually don't even buy the unit. The, the way that the ones I've seen down in Florida, anyway, with high-end houses, what, what happens is this. They go in, they lease the house for a couple years, or the apartments, whatever that is. They lease them for a couple years, and they have a, quite a few of them. So cash-wise, right, you don't have to buy them. You lease them, then what ends up happening, you put them on Airbnb, and they're just kicking in Whatever cash is over the lease, guess what? That is what's going uh, bottom line into the pocket. And I suspect that's why a lot of these apartment owners uh, are going bonkers, more so than the actual aspect of maybe the, the people that are living in them, because that's, that's kind of where it goes. But, um, you know, between Airbnb, uh, what, what has happened is this, though. There's no two ways about it. What has happened is that when you take a look at the aspect of what can be taken in on an Airbnb pad, it's a big number. And what I've seen, it actually makes smaller places worth a lot more money. And the reason being is that your supply or the demand is much larger for people that want decent places versus the larger, you know, luxury places. But that's kind of... I, I'm not in that huge luxury market, so I haven't, um, I haven't seen it as much. Let's put it that way. 877-927-6648. We go take a look at uh, Wrangell Resources. Wrangell also caught a bid out here today. That was up a buck eighty-three. Five hundred and sixteen thousand uh, shares traded, and that that got that got volume at, at the close, and that's what we needed. Uh, AEM, we needed volume with AEM. This wasn't getting too much. 900,000, it's not bad. We need more. We need like 1.2, 1.3 million for an Eco Eagle. Uh, Gold Corp did get volume. Uh, good, good price spread and volume. Gold, Gold Corp had uh, 7.3 million. You're going at the swing points out here that uh, have 9.2 or before the swing points. So that's not a bad way to come into those uh, swing points. We go over to Harmony Gold. We look at a couple of South Africans. Um, Harmony needs some more volume. That was up three cents. That's taken out its swings, though, just barely. Uh, but Harmony also looks like it wants to run for that 219. Uh, we go and take a look at the Rand dollar. Uh, Rand dollar trading at uh, 12.45 to one U.S. dollar. And uh, that's been in a range. Now, yeah, look at that. Yeah, we want that to stay inside that uh, 1231, actually. The high out there has been the 1790 to one US dollar. And what happens, folks, is that the higher that actually gets, you don't want it to get too high, but the higher that actually gets is that's when the, the, the South African companies get paid in US dollars and their expenses are in Rand dollars. So what ends up happening is that when the Rand is inexpensive, which it is right now, uh, they have a chance of making much more money, particularly when the actual physical metal is running, which, which it's doing right now. We go take a look at the uh, Canadian dollar. What's going to get interesting now with the Canadian dollar is this. The Canadian dollar is trading uh, 75 cents or a buck 25. Um, what you have here is that this looks like it's going to get stronger down to 120. And that is bottom line also saying this dollar is going to get weaker. You know, the dollar's, you know, this has been a one way trade on the dollar, and we're approaching one year. You know, it was the first week of January. Um, 
when the dollar reached its high, we take a look at this continuous contract. Actually, it was on January 3rd. So you're going to see it right up there, 103, yeah, 103,815. Uh, uh, went straight down, hit the first low in September, which was 90.990, and that's exactly what we're going after right now. The continuous contract is trading 91,565. So you can see right now we are only 665 ticks away from that the swing low. We break that swing low at volume, and you are going to see uh, some big action uh, inside the commodity market. What's going to be intriguing is, you know, what should happen is that um, that makes our companies more competitive when they're manufacturing, but that's the positive. The negative is that, guess what? We all have less cash when you're going overseas, less buying power. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow closed up 104, Nasdaq up 103, S&P's up 17 and a half. We'll come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over. We're going to take a look at a few of these commodities. So if we go into wheat first. So wheat's trading at 433 a bushel. Um, First, this is the first day that you had uh, any, any movement at all, uh, meaning outside of down. We went from 428 to 436. If we do go back and put this on a continuous contract, what you're going to see, W1. Okay, what you're going to see, pull this back like four years. Well, actually, I'll do it 
10 years. Okay, so I get this back 10 years right now, and you're going to see you're at the lower level uh, that where wheat has traded the last 10 years. 455 was the lows in uh, 2008, 425 in 2009, and 2016, you got down to 359. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, folks, it has to do with the, the aspect that, first off, the dollar, right? Second, though, what, what you have is this, is that this cold weather that's coming in, um, you know, you get winter wheat in the ground right now. So what happens is this, is that most times what you want to happen, and I get this from my man, Mr. Ed Young, God bless him, uh, teaching us commodities years ago, what happens is that you want a big snow cover first before you get this raw cold coming in. Um, and what has happened out here is that uh, this raw cold came in fast and furious. So, you know, you never know how the winter wheat comes out uh, for another, like, basically almost 12, 13 weeks. So I expect, it looks to me like this thing's going to start running uh, higher. If we get into, we come in, next look at the, let's go look at the beans. Okay, so the beans, because these are the only things that have actually get smoked and they haven't run for a long period of time. Uh, soybeans right now are trading at 9.64 a bushel. This would have a different, the, the cold wouldn't be as affected uh, with these babies, but they almost... Well, they rejected lower price out here today. They got to 958, rejected it. You're at 964. They're going to need a sign of strength in order to get to higher price. If we go into the con market, let's see what con did out here today. So con was up seven tenths of one percent, and that seems to be coming off the bottom. Let me put this on a continuous contract also. So con is 353 a bushel. This is also at the low. Look at this, man. These, these, these things have got killed. So this is at the lows for, since 2005. 2005, you're 308 a bushel. We hit uh, 301 in August of 2016. You know, so this has, this has a chance to get some expansion going. And then let's go right to cattle, because what you're going to have out here, what did cattle do today? Where's cattle? Cattle, okay. So cattle is up 1.4%, because what does happen is that inside the cattle market, you get the aspect, let me see, LC. As that feed gets more expensive, uh, at first cattle will run higher, then bottom line is that it will, if feed gets too expensive, it will run lower and will run lower very quickly because what they end up doing is that they don't want to feed all the cattle and so they just bring them to slaughter. Um, but you know what? Cattle also looks like it wants to get up and try to get it. This is 128. You know, so you're going to see uh, this cold out here, uh, no doubt, is going to affect quite a bit. That's what it looks like, um, you know, as we come into the uh, cattle eat more one cold. Oh, that's, that's just interesting. Yeah. That's a great to know, man. Thanks. One of the tigers are telling me that. Interesting. So they, so they die in the cold, which is terrible. They eat more in the cold. Um, yeah, there's, there's this cold, this, between the cold deal, between the dollar going downtown, uh, it looks to me that this thing is setting up, and it's setting up pretty good. And it would make sense, too, by the way, folks, because we haven't had a real commodity run in all these commodities for quite some time. You know, when you actually, when we go back and, well, here, watch me, go back and look at the actual gold market. If I take this back 20 years, right, what you're going to see, the, the, you know, the, the run, you had a couple different runs, okay? The whole thing started in 2002, 2001, you know, gold's at uh, 270 bucks, right? Your first run took you up to 1,033. That was 2008. During the crash, it goes from 1,033 to 666. Bang, like nothing. That run after it was extraordinary. You went from 681 and you didn't breathe up till 1920. Now, that was more than a one to one, that was more than a one to 1.618 ABC structure on the way up. Wicked extension, and that's always problem. Sure enough, you got the problem, you come off the high at 1920, it takes approximately what? How many, how many years? It's 2000, 
in September of 2011 to December 2015. So it took four years to hit a bottom. You hit the bottom at 1,046, you get a nice run. That run, uh, if you were in that run from the 2015, it was a huge one. It's, that, was a, that was, even though it looks like a little, that, that was a life-changing run, uh, from 1,046 to 1,377 if you were in the equities. The equities were up about 200% when gold only went up, uh, what, 300 bucks. Um, Last year wasn't bad, but not like the, the year before. This year, it looks to me like, you know, the way this gold market's running, uh, 1365's game, if we get over that with volume, let's see this, 11.23, yeah, this is good, that's a buck 30, you're talking 13, oh, interesting, 13.60, I see, okay, hold it. So the 1360, oh, this is going to be interesting. So what's going to happen, let me do that number again. It looks to me like 1123. Oh, it's two. Yeah, that's bigger than that. Okay, so you're talking about 1460. Yeah, 1460 is the number. So if we get to 1460, that's going to bring you into the downdraft from April of 2013. That's going to be a big number, man. Because that's going to, that would be considered ice of the downdraft. Now, that's, there's no doubt you're coming into a huge supply line there, but you getting into that particular place, uh, you are talking uh, some big numbers inside the equity uh, markets out there, meaning the gold and silver equity markets. And if we go back, let's look at Newmont just for a second, because Newmont Gold um, came out of nowhere and is actually looking pretty strong. And Newmont's way off its highs. Uh, it's high as like 72 bucks. You're at 38. That's going to go after 46. And that's a big supply line. So we'll see what ends up happening at 46. Newmont's going to be a good one to watch, though, because of that. Because if it can make its way through that supply line after 46, it's a big number. Because that supply line goes back from 2003 all the way over to 2012. It's hard to believe, you know, uh, whipping out some of these numbers. It's like I was looking this morning, and I've actually had the gold report. Uh, it comes out every week, of course, right? And I've had the gold report for 15 years, folks. It's like 15 years, man. I remember the first day I wrote the gold report. I remember exactly where I was. I remember exactly I met Mr. Dale Petz, who was helping me, one of the Tigers, putting all the charts together, setting up the template, man. Crazy. Happy New Year, Dale. Let's make it a great one. Market-wise, Dow Industrials up 104, NASDAQ up 103, S&P's up 18. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. 
This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And, uh, folks, stay warm out there, man. This is uh, pretty intense. So, uh, you know, going over some of these temperatures out here, uh, my good old hometown, Boston, uh, you are set to break a 100-year record. Check this out. This is wild. Boston hasn't reached uh, 32 degrees uh, since Christmas. Uh, and it's set to tie a 100-year-old record with seven days of high temperatures below 20 degrees. Uh, so I, I believe, uh, it doesn't say, let's see, 25th. Oh, well, okay, it'll be on until tomorrow. So bottom line, tomorrow would be the record-breaking day. Uh, that's, a bit, that's a big number, man. That is a big number. And uh, unfortunately, uh, what you're going to see is that uh, now some snow is going to be coming in for the next couple of days. Now, that's going to give a little relief as to the aspect of how cold it is. Unfortunately, right after that, uh, there's another Arctic freeze that's coming right down the pike. So uh, this is going to be pretty intense. Uh, this is really early in the aspect of uh, how this is coming in. Uh, what they're expecting, um, and Wednesday and Thursday, is that uh, New York's going to get two to three inches. Boston's going to come in around six. And then, uh, bottom line, um, you know, you're going to go right back down to the single digits again on Friday and Saturday uh, in the whole uh, Boston, Philadelphia, New York area. So it's serious business, man. Stay warm out there. And, uh, you know, if you do see some homeless people, man, get them out of that cold. Do something. Because, uh, you know, when I was up in Boston, it was always tough. Uh, I never could figure out why didn't, you know, these... Most of, the, most of them were guys up there at that particular point. You do see women out in the street now, unfortunately, too. But the bottom line is that you got to get them out of the cold, man. That's, that's the real bottom line because it's too late for them to run to Florida right now. But take care of them because they get, them inside a, get them inside something. That's the bottom line. It's not going to be a good scene up there. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Welcome to 2018, folks. Thanks so much for growling and prowling with us. Look forward to speaking to you right back here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Yeah, look at them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report.
and he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining Mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.